Thank you, Representative uh, Ryan, for taking my question. I'm going to go a little bit of a moral standing here with uh, this Obamacare health. Is this going to cover abortion just for the hedonistic happiness of the mother? And if so, what ramifications is that going to be for the doctors and nurses? Are they going to be able to say no based upon their religion, or is this going to be a carte blanche? Right. So we had two amendments. Uh, I and a uh, colleague of mine from Texas tried to pass the Ways and Means Committee um, called the Conscience Clause Amendment, and we called the Hyde Amendment. Um, what I mean when I say that is to prohibit taxpayer funding of abortions, which obviously, as you may know, if you know anything about me, I'm in favor of prohibiting, you have to explicitly prohibit taxpayer funds being used to finance abortions. We tried to put that explicit prohibit prohibition in here, and that amendment was denied. So, does this bill finance abortions? No, it does not explicitly finance abortions. Does this bill finance and require family planning? Yes, it does. And it leaves it up to the um, it leaves it up to the commissioner and to the entity to determine what constitutes family planning. So it allows for abortions to be funded with taxpayer dollars. The only way to make sure that that doesn't happen, you have to have the prohibition in the bill that is not in the bill. We try to amend it to make it so, so it's not. To so the conscience clause, this is what the Catholic hospitals talk about a lot. You don't know the answer to that question yet, meaning. The commissioner, which gets to decide uh, what benefits are covered, ultimately will decide um, what must be covered. And therefore, hospitals you know, who, who, who do this health care will be required to cover these benefits. And so it is an unanswerable question as to whether or not, say, Catholic hospitals have to finance abortions or not, because that is to be determined by the commissioner at a later date. But does this allow abortions to be financed? Yes, it does, because it doesn't explicitly prohibit it. And that's, that's the way you have to legislate such things. Um, I just wanted to thank you for coming to the soccer game last night. Oh, um, yeah. Good kick. Yeah, I, I mean, this is where I went to high school and I uh, used to play so soccer in the bullpen. Yes, my son played um, in the game last night, and actually it's for him that I'm asking this question. Um, very bright young man. We're a little worried about his future. He's wanted forever to be a doctor. And with everything that is going on, and all the rumors, you know, my husband comes home with a nice talk radio stuff to scare us. I don't know, should I tell him to be an engineer instead? I really, I really, I, I, he, is, to be a lawyer. he is wonderful. No. I'm joking. There are all these young people who are looking at everything that is going on right now and weighing their options. I'm like, God, do I really want to go into that mess? I hear this I don't think they do. Uh, here's what I hear from a lot of physicians. Uh, if this system occurs where if I'm right, you know, or he's right, you know, we don't agree on this, and the federal government is the primary or single payer of health care, and these new institutes and agencies are designed to tell physicians how to practice medicine by telling them what they will be paid for and what they won't be paid for based on what they do, the question is, and by the way, underpaying physicians, the public plan will pay Medicare rates, which on average underpays docs by 20%. The question is, is that a new attractive profession? Will smart young people want to go to eight, ten years of grad school, rack up all these student loans, and then to come out and practice medicine where they really don't have the discretion to practice their craft, practice their science? And I think the answer, I think, I think to ask the question answers the question. Um, now, I am not going to tell you what to tell your son or, you know, that is not my business, my job, but my concern is that, number one, we're not ready for the baby boomers right now. We're going from 40 million retirees to 80 million retirees in America. We're going to need more nurses, more doctors, more facilities, and do you think this kind of a system is going to encourage more people to enter this profession? <laughs> no, I don't think it will. So I really do believe what it's also going to do is create a brain drain of healthcare workers in the healthcare sector at a very time when we want this to be a a profession people want to get into. 
My biggest concern is it doesn't reward excellence. Look, you know, the most hardest working, selfless people in America today are healthcare workers. I mean, they care so much about their patients. They care so much about their people. We all know it. We all have friends, relatives. We've all been through it. We all know that these are people who go to this profession because they love this profession. They care about their patients. But also, they want to be rewarded for being excellent. And you don't want to have a system that gravitates to the lowest common denominator, that practices standard cookie-cutter medicine, so that those people who excel, who think outside the box, who make things better, don't get rewarded for that. You don't want to have that kind of a system. And I fear that is precisely the kind of a system that we will have in this country if we go down this path. So let me leave it at that. Uh, I appreciate everybody being civil. Um, I think this was a good conversation. This is a lot like, I'm doing 17 of these. This is very helpful uh, for me, and I appreciate it. And by the way, I, I want to say, if you didn't get your question answered or asked, meaning if somebody didn't ask your question that you weren't asking, you didn't get time, write it down. Make sure you give us your address, your phone number, and put it in the box on the outside. I want to get to all of your questions. It's obviously physically impossible in the time we have to get to everybody, so write your question down or look at our list of other listening sessions I'm doing more this week and attend those. Thank you very much, everybody.